Okay, welcome to a special edition of Llama Drives, where Llama Drives, and we have a special guest, DC Raymaker. Oh, yeah. we could effectively call this the Fitfile podcast from a car. We Maybe. could. It's, what, the, it's the pre-podcast podcast. The pre-podcast. We, we've got to do a few this week while we're here. Yeah. So we're over here at the Tour Down Under 2020. 2020. Have, have you screwed the, the date up already? I wrote 19 the other day. Yeah. I think I have a fair number of times. I just pretend I haven't, though. Works better that way. You cannot, once you've done the one, it cannot turn a one into a two. No, you're it's, right. Yeah. Unless you make it really long, it just doesn't No, work. it's over. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, Ray, what are you over here for at the Tour Down Under? Kangaroos and koala bears. We, and snakes? Uh, and snakes. And I checked off all three of those tonight in one shot. <laughs> so uh, it's perfect. I got the photos I needed to for the kids and the video I needed for them. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to go home now. So uh, less than 24 hours later. So we're just coming back from the media, uh, media, do media center. What we, what we call it? The, um, actually, let's go this way. Hello, camera. Oh, camera. <laughs> Go back you, home. And go, you and falling GoPros. <laughs> oh man, oh. that one just went straight to my cross. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a drone though, we don't have any drones. No. Uh, are we doing drones this week? I have drones, I don't know if we'll do them though. We'll see. I, I, we got them, you can't, can't go here without them. So. You've got, uh, yeah, the airspace around here is quite tight though because the airport is close into town. Anyway, we're yeah. rambling on, sorry. So Ray, you're in town to cover the tech for the Tour Down Under, as you do every year. Yep, yeah, so tech for Tour Down Under, uh, mostly things like electronic tech, so power meters and, oh, uh, I can't even think anymore. I'm, my brain is shot right now. Power it's meters and by computers and day. all that kind of goodness that has a chipset in it of some mm -hmm. sort. Uh, even like the mounts too, I like cover the mounts to see what people are using. Group sets? Giving group sets now? I've covered group sets. Uh, nothing much has changed there for the most part unless the sponsorship changes, mm -hmm. um, which to be fair is also kind of driving what happens on the power meter side these days as well. Right? You know, it's, it's all tied together. It's all sponsored. Okay, so we're in the tour village today after we had our passes updated and then updated and then updated again. There's been a bit of a change there for uh, how they allocate those, but we both got our media accreditation okay. Yep. We just had to get our things restamped again. The icons were not correct. The icons, we had the wrong emojis. I had the saddie face on mine. Actually, there was no faces at all. You had no faces. If we don't have the right faces, the wrong emojis, then you get nothing. You it's like the, the soup Nazi, no soup for you. I'm um, covering it, so they're, yeah, they're, they're with, the emojis on here. Without the emojis, you get, we got rejected. So we went to something that we had gone to a few times earlier in the day, and then there was a new security guard that actually checked the badges. And so once they got there, Someone was like, actually <laughs> doing their job at the end of the day. <laughs> <It was>. And they're <laughs> like, you know, you're missing your emojis. And we're like, oh, you're right. Oh, saddy face. Uh, so we went back. They fixed them all. It was no big deal. It was just one of those, like, sad, sad panda moments. Sad yeah. koala moment. Sad koala moment. Speaking of sad koalas, I saw one in a cage at the end. They might have got a bit scratchy. They, I think I think there's a koala quota. A koala can only be out for probably ten minutes, but probably before it gets probably angry or something. Yep. Um, that big long snake that I saw around some. Oh jeez. Nope. 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 -de nope. 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 I don't know why. The I'm not even holding a koala. That, to me, that's the, those things are sharp. Look at those. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. They, they, even the kangaroo had big long the sharpy things. The kangaroos will rip your things apart if yep. they get angry, but they're little ones. And they're probably sedate. No, no, they're not sedate. They're, they probably are, but no, they're fine. They're, they're, they were proper <laughs> rangers who were there. We're we'll getting trust not to ask. <laughs> <laughs> they were cute, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so what did we see there today? We saw a lot of uh, rotor twin powers. Mm -hmm. Probably more than in the past. A lot of, a fair number, yeah. I think they obviously. We'll run the numbers later on. Yeah, I, I gotta pull the, all the numbers from the whole post. I gotta, I think I got three more teams I gotta find. So okay. the way it works is just to give people backstory is that, um, like a lot of the stuff, if you look at my, you know, writings on it or cycling tips or anyone else who covers all this tour gear tech, for the most part, you're trying to find the teams have all their bikes back with the mechanics. Mm -hmm. So this morning we went down there and you know, the teams are kind of trickling in and out for the morning warm-up rides and whatnot because today wasn't a race day. Tomorrow's the first kind of uh, day of racing. And so you're kind of coming in and out. So you got, I got like eight or so teams in the first hour and a half I was there. And then we came back again this afternoon, got a few more and I'm missing just a couple more left yep. uh, to get. So yeah, I got to consolidate some of that stuff, but yeah, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a fair number of road of the show we haven't seen, I think in the past as much. Um, still the usual a blend of uh, a lot of Shimano, of course, and mm -hmm. that's, that's primarily driven, uh, not primarily, it's 100% driven by Shimano group set sponsorships. They've more or less dictated that if you're on a uh, Shimano team sponsorship, you'd have to be riding the power meter as well. Uh, so that's going to drive a lot of that. And then a couple of uh, SRMs here and there. Um, and well, so, so, uh, I saw Power to Max. Power to Max on uh, Education yeah, yeah. First. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So yep. they have one. Um, 
see who else we thought saw that was different. Um, four eyes. There was a stage. Four eyes. There was one. There's stages on the can't be group set as well. Yes. Um, and there's a few more again. There's a couple that I haven't found yet. So once you find them and you validate mm -hmm. what's actually there, because a lot of times this time of year they haven't updated all the sponsorships on their websites, so you can't really take that as the like the ground truth. You have to actually go and see what's on the bikes. Yeah, but also access to product. I think, uh, I mean, Rocher have come out with the InSpider. I think we'll see teams move to that. If that's now going to be their premier power meter, we're seeing people on the Twin Power. Now, we covered the Twin Power two years ago. Three. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not a spring chicken. Uh-oh. Camera. Camera down. Good catch. Selfie style. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's not a spring chicken. That, that's a temporary mount, by the way, so it's always going to bounce. I sprung that on Ray. I didn't tell him it's going to fall off all the time. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll see later on, I guess, probably... Well, I think be... NTT is an example of that, right? We talked to them today and they said that right now they're on the Twin Power because it's more or less their last year's bikes, which is common across a number of the teams. At this time of year, it's still a blend of new stuff versus not quite yet new stuff. Yeah. Um, and in the case of Rotor, they've got the uh, Inspider stuff announced and I think it just hasn't, like, it hasn't hit our boxes yet. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually a good barometer to be honest is that do a lot of times units? we get units before these pro teams do mm -hmm. um, for actually you know day-to-day -day usage and so given you know, we don't have it yet they don't have it yet it's not gonna be on the pro teams bikes uh, for this race yep so speaking of NTT now we'll have to discuss this on the podcast as well yeah, but we'll yeah. do it here on the vlogcast drives yep. or, or whatever I'll name this one uh, we caught up with NTT today to see their usage of data to drive their team towards better results and things yep it all made sense, really in depth. So what they were using is uh, rider history, both um, their own riders and other riders and pulling in data sources off the web. Um, and also the demands of certain races or all the races throughout the year, which are UCI points races. So the demands of the races, matching them with rider types and rider data in the past, tracking fitness, tracking every... It There's was, so much data. It was awesome to see. We've, we've, we've talked about this before and we theorized how data could be used. They're doing it. They have the budget and the people behind the scenes actually using this data for good. And the term rider history probably makes it sound like just, just the workouts. No, it's it's everything. Yeah. Like it's in a yeah. phenomenal amount of data they're pulling in. Um, just to kind of like off the top of my head, things that they got. So obviously they got the workouts themselves. So that all the training workouts, all the racing workouts are in there. Mm -hmm. um, things like the temperature and all that kind of stuff comes with that. And they're leveraging all that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. That then drives them into hydration and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was the all riders yep. Yep, weigh in every single morning on yep. connected scales. And before a race, after a race. Before a race, after a race. Even to the detail of do you have clothes on? Do you have your shoes on? It will deduct, deduct the weight of the shoes if they have that as they check in. So they don't need to strip naked. Right, um, they, so they normalize to what they call the naked weight, right? And yeah, so they yeah. take, yeah, they all the shoes all the stuff is weighed so they can say which helmet are you wearing and it just it just subtracts that like it's it's super fascinating they talk about they're using mostly garmin wearables to pull in uh, 24 by 7 resting heart rate and mm -hmm. then lay algorithms on top of that to figure out their uh, nighttime heart rate to their own standards right because garmin gives you their own nighttime resting heart rate but Matrix, they the, yeah they want they, to special source behind the scenes yeah, yep, exactly they, they remove um, all the variables of that Let's see what else. They, I mean, just so much data. Uh, and it's fascinating to see how they're starting to leverage that data. Data, like the underlying uh, data itself is one thing, but you have to find a way to leverage that. And so they have tons of algorithms. So like all this stuff pipes into like three rough different systems. Mm -hmm. And one of them is today's plan. Um, so today's plan is kind of like training peaks, uh, just a different Australian based, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they're doing a lot of fascinating stuff in data and they're doing their own algorithm algorithms on top of that in today's plan for their own dashboards. The flexibility we saw of yep. that. So if you were to go to oh, something nuts. like even just, let's just say on a very basic level, let's upload to Strava and get TSS or fitness and fatigue and that's it, that's locked. They've got access to the teams, I guess, at today's plan to make that a lot more flexible and a lot more in depth. They're not just tracking FTP. And when I said, oh, so you're not just tracking FTP, and he's like, oh, no, like, thrown out and again we discussed this regarding uh, our racing on Zwift in the crit which was a short period of time only 20 minutes you can't really judge your FTP from that and different people at different levels again back to the Sufferfest 4DP which is more in depth or a better power profile than just FTP that's exactly what they were doing I didn't want to mention to them yeah. oh you're using 4DP because it, it, it's it's the same model 4DP is based on a model that has been around for a while um, of different power yep. zones and things they were using those to the pro level Literally, well, the wrong level. And they talked about some of the challenges they had, for example, with TSS, right? And the fact oh, yes. that it, it normalized, because TSS is on a 30 second rolling average, if you look at a, a pro race type scenario with all these surges and sprints, a lot of that stuff just gets completely bulldozed mm -hmm. and flattened. And yep. so they don't, they don't see that and they don't see the load. They said for training, it's more or less fine, but for a pro 
world tour um, type race, it was drastically undercutting uh, the impact of, of those races on that rider. Uh, but then to talk about predictive stuff, how they that's they lay the in the calendar, like this yeah. is this isn't just an Excel. That's a cool thing. Like, we're not talking like just a random Excel sheet. We're talking they have custom applications, mm -hmm. custom platforms they've built. Um, some of them are built atop things, so built the top today's plan. They built yep. atop uh, let's see, Lumen. Um, Lumen, not, not athletics, but the Lumen Sports something or other. Oh, and it's all in the cloud. All, all in the cloud, cloud. Yep. yep. And the riders check in every morning they wake up. They put in what time they went to sleep, what time they woke up, in case their device doesn't capture that correctly. All their mood stuff, how are they feeling? I think the, my favorite attribute was um, a scale that you slid on. And you basically said, um, how excited are you about doing physical activity today? <laughs> right? Like, uh, I know for the last three years, mine would have been, yeah, not much. Yep. <laughs> I would have uh, been getting a call from the coach. And that's what, that, that's what happens. If they say, look, I'm not really motivated, that'll flag the coaches and the, the support staff to give them a call and say, hey, what's up? What can we do for you to make, you know, to, to switch that over to yep. go green, go out there and, and nail your numbers. Um, the predictive stuff was excellent. So they're talking about history. History is easy to obtain. Not, well, not easy. It's You obtain history from the data that you have. Two years three years, four years, your trajectories and everything, but also the predictions of where they're going to head and who's going to peak at what time to use that to future, I guess, plan out races and on the demands of races of the park. Love it. Absolutely love it. So you'll be doing a more in-depth post on that? I think so, yeah. I think I'm going to, I've got to, I've got to kind of write it all up and then we'll go back and I'm going to go sit down with them again and get a bunch of screenshots so yeah. we can figure out that capture what it, it's, it, you can't have totally like censored screenshots in order to explain this concept. Like we were looking at real live data of real live athletes yeah, and yeah. to be able to see that and go, now I get it, right? Versus a lot of times companies give you like these just blanket garbage that just doesn't doesn't really help picture what's going on in the mm -hmm. race scene. Mm -hmm. To be able to see that and go, ah, so they've got some of that they can they can probably help show a little bit of that picture. Um, but it's it's fascinating stuff. And I think, you know, there's two questions that came to mind. One is on the whole like slider scale of how do you feel about physical activity today? My first question was, are the athletes actually honest here, right? Yes. Because I could see how an athlete, I mean, this is their livelihood. And if they said every day, no, right, then does a coach go, oh, you're not going to train today, not going to race today, et cetera. Not pulling your weight, you're out of yeah. the team, you're unmotivated, get out of here. Exactly. And um, so how honest are they? And I said yeah. that it sounded like a few years ago it was tougher, but now that the riders get it, that they're on their side. Yeah. So it, the relationship is such, and this important part, it is a relationship between the coach and oh, yeah the, uh, well in this case more the sports science staff and yeah. the rider to be able to trust the coach to be able to understand that, you know what, I'm exhausted today because I just flew 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, the best thing for and me as an athlete. And they can see that with resting heart rate too. So exactly, we actually yeah, they, that, they showed some of that stuff. They yeah. showed one rider that had just gone the other direction actually from Australia back to Europe um, and to be able to see the impact of the flight uh, on that rider or just stuff that we know, but yeah. to be able to quantify that and have that in the training plan and go, ah, this rider just needs to chill an extra day or be a little lower today is, it's cool to see that data. None of the stuff is earth shattering by itself. Mm -hmm. Like it's all things that, you know, coaches have done for years, mm -hmm. but to have the data behind it and have, like they said that, you know, when they onboard a rider, they're looking at asking for one to two years minimum of data um, that they just import straight into this entire platform because all yep. the riders have this data in one of these major platforms and pull it in and off they go. Also, that second question is whether or not it's required. And this year under a contract, under the rider's contracts, it, the data is required. Yep. Um, versus in the past years, it was more like a best effort. Um, but essentially saying, you know, if you want to be a rider with our team, here's our minimum you know, requirements. And um, I'll have to dig into more about what the kind of like privacy aspects of that are. So I think that is important uh, for these riders. But ultimately, if you want to be a rider on the team, then this is what's required. And it scales pretty well because they had 30 riders or so yeah, that, that they that, yeah. track, plus the rest of the pro peloton, which they're pulling in stats for. Hey, catch. Boom, I'm getting yeah. smoother at that. Um, <laughs> We're getting some liquid nails as well as some WD-40 to stop all, stop all the squeaks in the place we're staying. Yeah, and even to see across those 30 riders, they had just a simple like location map, like a simple uh, flat earth yes. map of here's bang, bang, where bang, every bang, rider bang, is Google. right now in the world and their team staff as well. It was well open street maps, I think it was, or open maps. Yeah. You could see where the riders were in the world. It's Which just, made sense. You don't want to call a ride if you don't know really where they are. This, this got from their yep. daily check-in app on their phone, yep. checking their geolocation. Bang. Yeah. So it's, it's simple, but it's just using technology for how it can be used. And I love that because we cover so much tech that just doesn't integrate together. Yep. They're pulling everything together. But what's great to see is there's somebody with a budget to do that and someone's job to put all that data together. It's And one thing that we always fail to realize, oh, I fail to realize is for me, it's like, well, it's their job, but it's not just their job. You have to live and breathe cycling it's a 24-hour thing it's whatever you whatever yeah. food you put in your mouth 
That results in the scales. Oh, plane spotters. Plane spotters, yeah, awesome. Yeah, but is there a plane? Oh, there's that. It's my plane from yesterday. There we go, my Singapore plane. Oh, there we go. It's oh, leaving we, again. Wait, grab the camera. Sayonara. Oh, there we go. Camera up. There we go. I'm getting good at this now. If only hey. I, maybe I have a career in this. Who knows? Plane spotter. Oh, wow, that, man, that stabilization is nice. It's working quite well. That is the seven. Um, I know it's a seven. Eight. I know. Yeah. It's still nice, though. The funny thing about GoPros is that they get orphaned very quickly. The six was great. The seven came out, best thing ever. Seven was fantastic. Yep. The eight came out, seven, what, huh? Everything's yeah. on the eight now. Yeah, so. you're, you're dead to me. <laughs> um, the seven's still really good. It's still really good. Then the eight is like, oh, just this, the stabilization. The hyper smooth on this is real. I can't, we're going around a corner now. I'm sure it's going either your way or my way, and it slowly stabilizes back. Okay, cool. So that was um, yep. NTT, which were yep. dimension data. A lot of new people on board this year as well. Biano Riss, we didn't actually ask him about that. He's back yep. on board running that team as a DS, I believe, or director. Anyhow, he's back in the yep. game. So that was one thing we'll look out for your post on that. Next up, we went and saw Leomo. Now, I covered the Leomo Type S head unit, which was an Android device, which was a phone, which was a head unit for a computer, which it had a bit of an identity crisis, but it's more about the sensor kit. And today, we saw a ton of data about the sensor kit, and we have some to play with. We do. We have, we have two units. What, you got one, I got one. That's going to be fun. Be, uh, it was good to see... I'll be honest. So, as <laughs> I was not terribly excited about the prospects of going to this particular presentation. I went to the one last year with Adam Hansen, yeah. and it was almost a one-on-one -on -one session with another media company, and we couldn't hear. Um, Adam Hansen's a bit of a quiet speaker. I'm like, no, oh, this was a bit terrible. Adam was really good today, and the data he presented, and the, and the people also in the crowd. We had Neil Henderson from Wahoo slash Sufferfest, um, Brad McGee, who's a high-performance coach with the Cycling Australia. Yep. Um, Greg Henderson was there, yeah, next yeah. Pro Tour, and they were shouting, oh, you know, Hendo, he was, he was in the Pro Tour with you guys. So yeah. there was some rapport there. The conversation in the room was almost just as good as the presentation itself. It was. It, the, the, it was an awesome, it was well worth the time. Like yeah, I said, it was, yeah. it was not on my like, list of exciting things for the day that I, I thought I had to attend. Um, mostly because I, I felt like I was going to get sold on, I thought it was going to be a 90-minute like, timeshare presentation, right? I was ready for like yeah, yeah, listening yeah. to slide over slide. They did like a three slides intro of yep. the thing, and then it was like being dropped into a fighter jet. Like you just, we yep. were boom yep. off, and Adam was just chugging along on crazy stats for 44 slides, with and then pulling out into demos and this and that. And so Hans Sino is a techie. He's he, super techie. So, and he's into this technology, but also into how it helps him. His bike setup, yep. um, he went into, they changed cranks. He used to run 180 mil cranks, and I don't think any manufacturer these days runs 180 mil cranks. So he's now yep. on 177.5s. He had to change his bike fit for that and he is he has his bike fit absolutely nailed and he's like oh okay so I've got to ride these cranks now well how do I adjust my bike fit for the same was it the hip tilt he knew the angle yeah. the, all the metrics within half an hour he had it nailed by just by himself by himself in what looked like the parking lot of the uh, parking garage of the Port Blue Hotel in Mallorca, the training camps there. That's what, where like, it would have been. That's, yeah. that's what it looked like to me on um, like weird like insider things you would know if you've been to like the training camp locations. And uh, yeah, he just went down there by himself in the parking garage uh, and, like where the bikes are stored and stuff and did his own thing. Had his own um, testing protocol. Again, because he's a yep. nerd, he had the testing protocol. If you just jumped on a road, you could get yeah. the data over a number of rides. But he had the testing protocol and he had the video of him doing that. So changing the saddle, uh, 2.5 mil, 2.5 mil, back to base, 2.5 mil, 2.5 mil. And then when he had that nailed, it was one mil, one mil? Yeah. Away for, just to get He'd done hit. 15 positions in 35 minutes total. Like super regimented, yeah, super quick. Uh, it was fascinating. It was just good to see the technology used. like how you actually can use it. A lot of times I go to presentations like this and they talk about theoreticals and yes. they talk about like yeah. how someone might use it. No, this was like after they did the three slides initial of just what the product is in three slides, which was all like two and a half minutes. Yep. It was just the Adam show of how he uses it for his testing and his stuff and how he uses it to also set up athletes and stuff like that. What they nailed is they knew the audience. They read the audience of who yep. were going to be attending, high performance coaches and technicians like ourselves, and they, they, they presented to us. So we were like, this is actually pretty yep. damn interesting. Gave it context. Super interesting. Indoors, I cannot wait to test out. Indoors, left, right, wonkiness, X, Y, Z on my legs. The dead spot. Um, was it the dead spot metrics? Yeah, that could be super fascinating. Even things we talked about too are like awesome. testing the differences between riding, for example, a kicker plus climb versus yes. a kicker bike that, in terms of the tilt going up and down <laughs> and what that looks like on the body, the way the body handles that. Um, it could easily be picked up by a system like this. Yep. Uh, so that was all stuff that, that'll be pretty fascinating. Um, 
Are we going to lose light if we go in here? We are. We're going to have to wrap this one up because we're almost at our com. Uh-oh. But anyway, we can talk about this all day long, and we will. So watch out for those in upcoming posts on Ray's site. Yep. And little snippets here and there on mine. So, Ray, your Instagram's going off this week? My Instagram is... I'm Instagramming. That's It's not quite the Peloton bike story, but it's... Uh, we're getting there. It's all good. All right, links below to our Instagram. Thanks for coming along. We are here at our com. Uh, we'll be here all week. Look out for more content that we'll be doing. Uh, thanks for coming along, Ray, to Llama Drives. Llama Drives, race sits. It's all good. It's all good. All right, see you soon, everyone. <laughs>